Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another NBA 2K14 Next Gen My career game with Denny Tyson the T-Wolves here And right away, game does not start off well And as you'd expect, it doesn't start off well because me and Rubio are on the floor together It's something I always have to mention because, you know, maybe to you guys You're just like, oh, this guy's probably just bitching But when you actually play the game and you're a point guard, pass first point guard, play winner, pass first point guard the offense just doesn't work properly, and it shows. When me and Ruby are on the court together, mainly in the first half of these games, which is when it happens, you know, you'll see my numbers. They just look like nothing happened because really, no I can't really do much. There's not much that can be done. The floor spacing isn't done well. And even when we do space the floor well, Rubio doesn't look to shoot. Rubio, when I give him an open look, he just stands there here. I set up Rubio for the three-pointer, and it looks good because uh, Ashik or Ashik, whatever you want to call him, he was not even close, but Rubio just can't make it because he's Rubio. But I'm Denny, so I'm going to try to make that shot, and we do make it. Because as you know, we upgraded our mid-range shot. We got it looking all right, and this is the reason, sole reason. Like, you need one reason to hate 2K14 and just Hall of Fame in general. It's that. 2K13 was the same. I don't really know much about 2K12 in the other games. I didn't play him too much. But Dwight Howard does not hit those kind of shots in real life, yet he seems to make them on a consistent basis in 2K. Of Fade away jumper? The man barely shoots like 40% from the free throw line. Like, come on. And this game, one of the big things was defense. You know, I'm trying to step in my defense. Obviously, you know, I'm getting used to the game. My on-ball defense itself isn't that high. But in this game, I was playing some pretty good defense. And you see Beverly knocks down the tough shot. But, you know, I'll get a hand in his face for the most part. I would be able to swipe the ball out of his hands. You know, just staying with him and not losing contact. I know it's Patrick Beverly. And along with Jeremy Lin as well. But... I mean, it's progress, you know? I mean, before, I could barely even um, handle Tyshawn Taylor. So, you know, I improved that a little bit. And I also got that jumper going. It was looking nice. And this game, you know, it got pretty good. You see my first half teammate grade. Even though the numbers aren't gaudy, the... No, I mean, my teammate grade looks good. I'm pressing my teammates. And eventually, the numbers did start getting pretty good. You see, I got five assists. Um, For some reason, I get blamed for this James Harden bucket. I wasn't even my man. I was just double teaming him, and Kevin Martin just thought I, it was a switch. So that was just a little bit of mis uh, miscommunication. And obviously, me, me and Kevin Martin aren't really on good terms. So maybe he just wanted to see my teammate go down. I don't know. But um, look at Denny Tyson and fade away uh, uh, step back jumpers. And now they're scared of Denny, and they're leaving my teammates open. And that's exactly what I needed. That's exactly what I talked about from day one. I need to get the jumper going. So then the passing lanes open up. And now those passing lanes are open. Look at the help defense there. By I'm not sure who that was. I think it's Williams. I don't know who. But whoever it was, the help defense came. And now I'm able to kick it out to the open guy. Because you're going to leave someone open. I'm going to kick it to them. Unless I'm like on fire. I'm just like focused on myself. More than likely, I'm going to find that Chevette that's open. And let him knock down the shot. And going to the fourth quarter... This is looking like Denny's best game easily as a pro. And I'm in a groove right now. I'm in a groove. I'm just reading the defense there. You know, I drove, I think, Dwight. Dwight was one-on-one -on -one with me. So I was like, all right, I got to take Dwight. Even though he's athletic and it's 2K Hall of Fame, so it's going to be cheesy, I still got to take Dwight. And I attacked him pretty well. Now, my turnovers, a lot of my turnovers are kind of fluky in this game. I was talking, I was really making bad passes, just like the end of the shot clock. Look at those guys in the bench. That's pretty funny. They're doing that, like, um, Clippers thing or the Warriors thing where people just, like, <laughs> go crazy when someone dunks. Except, it wasn't really too spectacular, but I still found it funny. And here, like I said, I'm in just, a, like, in a shooting range right now. Where they, you know, I'm just focused. And I'm just knocking down the open shots. They're three-pointer. You know, it's putting moves on my defender. Unfortunately, my teammates can't finish every time, but... Here, we have our first career double-double, and that's what it's all about. There, I don't know how the hell they got me with that. That was, like I said, my turnovers were fluky in this game. I don't think there was really one turnover. Maybe there was one turnover that was my fault, but besides that, well, this one might have been my fault. But as I said, Kevin Martin and myself aren't on good turns. But this game, a double-double, easy, my best career game. So, we'll see what the coach has to say about it. Hopefully, something good, right? Yeah, come on in. Hey, coach, you wanted to see me? I did. Take a seat. So, what happened out there? I didn't actually watch the game, so I really have no idea what happened. I, I'm just guessing you stunk. So I expected more from yeah, you. Yeah, I know. It didn't really go how I expected it to. Look, you aren't going to shine in every game. So you just got to step it up. I don't know how much points you score, but you should probably score more points. All right? I can't give you more minutes unless you show me you deserve them. Yeah, I, I hear you, coach. Hey, I'll do better next time out. Cool. That's the attitude you need to have in here. But I'm going to be straight with you. I'm going to have to pull back your minutes until we figure out how to utilize your game. Cut my 
minutes. Yo, I'm barely getting enough chances as it is. Now you're going to keep me out even more? I know you're frustrated, but that's just life of the rookie. You have to pay your dues. And understand that sometimes it takes a while before your hard work Yo, pays how off. How am I supposed to make an impact and show you what I can do when I'm coming off the bench at random times? You can't expect me to stand out. You're not even letting me get a chance to get into a rhythm, man. Right now, we're just trying to put the best players on the floor as we can. Like I said, I didn't watch the game, so I don't really know what happened. But I don't think you're one of them, so your playing time is going to be cut. Yo, this is crazy. Okay? Crazy. It's about the impact, alright? You got to make a good impact on the court. And even though I didn't watch the game, I didn't see it. So, I need to give me 110%, and whenever you get your next chance, give me that 110%. So, I'm going to get back to this file, and I'm actually going to watch the game here and see what happened. I'm not happy about this. Tonight's game marks your first career double-double. Do you view this game as a stepping-off point in your career? Individual stats don't mean much to me, to be honest. I've always felt like I don't need a stat line to tell me if I played well. I've played this game since I could walk. I know when I've done well and when I perform poorly. Tonight wasn't perfect, but I think people will now start to take notice of the improvements I've made recently. All right, so that had to be like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. As you see right away, I go to the GM. I ask for more minutes because I don't understand why coaches taking minutes away from me. And that's what just drives me crazy about this 2K14 next gen career stuff is it is so scripted and through all of this i didn't lose any minutes i'm still playing 28 minutes per game i don't know what that had to do with me asking more minutes from the um, gm or what but um i mean it just makes no sense that i have my best career game get a double double a minus teammate grade for i think it's the first time i ever had an a minus grade or anything in the a's but the coach asked me to have less minutes i didn't make a good enough impact like I just think this 2K thing is so scripted that it just doesn't make sense sometimes. It just doesn't care about common sense. And even though I had my best game, Coach was like, nah, you had a bad game, actually. Like, what? You know? If I, if I had, like, 20% shooting from the field and 6 turnovers, I understand. But that was my best game. I don't understand. So, um, I'm just going to try to ignore it the best I can. But it doesn't make me look forward to playing this game sometimes because... I can have a really good game and 2K will just fuck you over because, you know, it's just a scripted thing. And it doesn't really matter what you do, you know, but like I said, I'm just going to ignore it the best I can. Some people, they'll think like, oh, you know what? I quit. I'm not going to play this. I'm not going to play well for this team anymore. They don't deserve my talents. Me, I got to, I got to, you know, go out and prove what I can do. All right. I'm going to go and prove what I can do. Eat your heart out, Coach Adelman. And by the way, that press conference was a direct shot at the coach. I hope people know it is. How about I hope the coach notices that I played well? Because he sure as hell didn't. And obviously, I made a mockery of the scene. I obviously didn't go by what they said by the script. Because that's how I felt. Because, God damn it. Did you watch the game, Adelman? I know you're on the sideline, but were you, were you wearing blindfolds? You know, so I was a little bit fired up in this game. And here, you see me get a steal here in Kevin Martin. In the second half... You know, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, first half, me and Rubio play on the court together. Things aren't too great. The second half, you put me on the court with shooters like Martin, Chaved, Derek Williams, and Kevin Love. Say hello to an offense dream. Or so you may think. I'm not shooting well. Maybe coach is right. You know, maybe coach is right. I'm not playing well. Even my, what should be assists aren't looking too well. At least we're blowing out the Pacers, which is really surprising. Didn't really expect to blow them out. Didn't expect to win, period. But, um... You know, I don't know. Maybe Coach is right. But right now, I'm setting up my teammates well. I got seven assists. Maybe I'm not shooting well. But I do have seven assists. Only four points heading to the fourth quarter, which after the Rockets game was a little bit of a setback. But I am putting moves on people. I think that's Granger. I just absolutely made look stupid there. <laughs> you know? But, um, you know, we're putting moves on here. Then he knocking down the shot and heading to the fourth quarter. That's all I needed. I just need an open look at the basket. A nice shot to go down. And from there, it was on. And like I also mentioned last video, the defense is improving. And in this game, a lot of really good defense by Denny. As we got a buzzer beater there by Berea. Beautiful finder by Denny. Berea made a beautiful cut. And it was just... 
beautiful, dare I say. And then you see Denny Tice pulling up the three and knocking it down to start the fourth quarter here. I'm pretty much going to play the entire fourth quarter, as I usually do. I mean, the only time I don't play the fourth quarter is when coach subs me out the beginning of the fourth and then brings me in later. But this game, I played the entire fourth. And like I said, the defense was playing well. We forced turnovers. That led to offense. Not there, but I mean, led to offense like this as Denny goes to the rim. And then this fourth quarter... I don't know, I just snapped. I don't know what happened to me, but I just started making like the Pacers, you know, my test dummies here. Started making the Pacers my example here, that coach, look at what I'm doing out here. That shot wasn't really one of them, but after that, Denny went off. Going to the rim, putting dribble moves all over Watson and um Stevenson, whoever wanted to guard me. What well, they weren't really guarding me. They couldn't. Knocking down shots, making open passes to teammates. More than anything, knocking down shots. End of the fourth quarter with like seven assists. But into the fourth quarter, ball was in my hands and I was just making magic happen. Magic happen. I had four points with like 40 seconds left in the third quarter. And look at how much points I have now. Over 20 for the first time in my career. Edelman, you still want to cut my minutes? Do you still want to cut my minutes? Or do you want to give me some more minutes? Now, what do you want to start me over? Rubio is one thing, because I understand Rubio, he's, you know, been playing for a few years, and he has the numbers and the reputation, but you still want to cut my minutes? I'm driving to the rim, I'm making layups, layups that I haven't made before, knocking down the mid-range shot like it's nothing, cutting passes there to Shaved, finding the open teammate there when I have to. Do you still want to cut my minutes after I'm knocking down fadeaway shots like that, getting 27 points? Where did this come from? And there, that was stupid. I had like two open teammates, but 2K naturally forces me into a turnover. But we get the ball right back, knocking it out of Watson there. And you know this game, I ended up missing a few shots at the end. I was just taking a few heat check shots. And I eventually started missing. But this game was just a pure, you know, heads up. I'm for real, all right, coach? So on that note, hope you guys leave a like in the video. Um, subscribe for more 2K14 next-gen gameplay. As you see, Denny Tice is stepping his game up. So that's going to lead to a lot of exciting moments. So I will catch you guys next time, and I'll leave you guys with the press conference and then a little cutscene that happens afterwards that you're going to want to check out. Performance tonight, clearly a coming-out party. You've made it known now that you'll be around the NBA for a long time. Does that sound about right? Yeah, it sounds about right if this was some made-for-TV movie or something. I mean, come on, real life don't work that way, man. There aren't moments as cut and dry as you'd like to believe. I don't just step out on the court one day and have a coming out party. It's a process, man, a long process. And tonight was a really nice step for me, but only a step. And there'll be plenty of more before all is said and done. I think this is the cause for a little celebration. Not every day a rook puts up numbers like Celebration. that. Celebration. Come on, man. Like what? Well, we're just going to go out, get some dinner, and hang with people. You're coming, right? I don't know, man. I'm tired. We got that shoot around tomorrow. Yo, you got nothing to worry about. We won't be out too late. Just unwind and have a little bit of fun. Uh, all right, man. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to go out for a bit. Excellent. Go get changed and we'll be at the garage in 15.